Hello, my magical friends. It is Tuesday live chat time. Um, so it's Tuesday, <laughs> and I'm Dr. Andy Harper, um, chiro doctor of chiropractic, certified animal chiropractic chiropractor. I've been playing with dogs um, for 18 years now. And today, on our live chat, we're just having a little chat here, right? We're just taking a look at things a little differently. We're asking some questions. Um, we're bringing in a sense of what does the energy read as? Um, if you follow the energy, what would that create? So a little bit of that stuff. Um, we talk about here on Dr. Andy's World. And today, um, I'm blanking on what Keisha put in the email. Um, what I had the energy and what I had started with was preventative care. And this morning, um, Keisha was so cute. She's like, okay, and she writes it down, you know, because she takes care of the emails for me. So grateful. And then as we finish up our, our meeting, uh, she goes, okay, I, I have to ask a question. She's like, what do you mean by preventative care? And I go, that's a really good question because in my head, I know exactly what I'm talking about preventative care. That means you go in to see somebody here, the animal chiropractor, before you have a problem. And this is a concept, this is an idea, this is an energy, this is something that chiropractors have been attempting as a whole for people, um, and now animals, um, to get people to do. But our human nature our reality of our medical care, as it may be, is you wait till there's a problem. And then you go and you ask somebody else what the name of that problem is. And, and then you just take what they tell you, hook, line, and sinker. And generally speaking, if you are in a conventional model, you then get a pill or a treatment that is supposed to um, eliminate said problem, right? And any kind of symptom is said problem. And then you take something, um, a protocol, a pill, and that symptom goes away. Uh, are you really cured? So preventative care. And I have a wonderful example. Um, this does happen in my practice. It doesn't happen often. Um, I generally congratulate the owner when it does happen, but I recently had a gal bring her eight-year-old Labrador in to see me. She had actually ran him. She biked. He ran for eight miles. So he was perfectly tired and perfectly delightful for his session, and he had no symptoms. She just wanted him adjusted because he was eight and because he was active and to keep him active. And this preventative care is so much ease and it's so simple that there's not a lot of heavy energy on it. So we don't tend to do it. We don't tend to do it for ourselves. We don't tend to do it for our animals because it would actually be too easy. It would actually be too simple. So why would I bring my animal in for just an adjustment? Because doesn't the adjustment fix a problem? Doesn't the adjustment fix a limping? It contributes to the body um, healing itself. That's what adjustments do. And the adjustments that impulse into the nervous system, because that is where chiropractic um, plays. It plays with the nervous system, it plays with the fascia, it plays with the muscles, it plays with the bones, it plays with the joints. And all of those are controlled and information travels to and from through the nervous system. So let's say you have a six month old puppy and you take that puppy in to be adjusted. Puppy is fine. Puppy has fallen down three stairs, landed on his head, popped up, kept going, right? Puppy goes to puppy play group, rolls around, hops up, looks good, running, you know, having a good time. There's no problems that we can see. 
and you go into the chiropractor and the chiropractor does their evaluation they do their adjustments puppy's like hey that was fun i got some cookies i got some really strange pets one or two of those kind of pinched a little but wow i feel so much better we when we're talking about our dogs we don't know exactly right we don't know exactly how it feels um my best guess after 18 years it's very similar to us they get that impulse into the nervous system and then they go right oh wow that was cool the endorphins go to our brains just like after we work out after a massage after an adjustment we get endorphins we get a feedback in the nervous system they do too plus now puppy puppy's been handled in a very different way had a brand new experience that they loved so later when maybe something does happen when they go to puppy playgroup get rolled a little too hard there's a squeak and they don't move their neck quite quite the same way and you go back to the chiropractor puppy's like oh yeah i've done this so we don't have the same anxiety we have neural pathways that have been started that the puppy realizes oh this is what this person's going to do here i can do this all right let's say six months chiropractor's like, hey, why don't you come back two to four times a year? Again, super simple, super easy. How often does that time get away from us? This puppy's owner's like, got it, wrote, made notes, made those appointments, went in every quarter, puppy's entire life. And at age four, that puppy did get Rolled at the dog park pretty bad. Limping in the front, neck very tight, injured. That animal, off to the chiropractor, right? We're going to go do a handful of adjustments really close together. We're not going to do those three, four months apart. I can, close to guarantee as possible, right? Because there are no guarantees in life. That animal is going to recover faster and with more ease and the use of less medicine because that body is used to those adjustments. That body is used to those impulses into the nervous system. That body knows what to do with that. And when that nervous system is taken care of through adjustments for your entire lifetime, for your pet's entire lifetime, I've seen it time and time and time and time again. I don't have studies. I don't have anything but my anecdotal eyeballs, those animals live longer and more comfortable as a whole. I, and animals that maybe haven't done it their whole life, uh, maybe uh, mom and dad find me at age nine after we've had two knee replacements, two TPLOs and a really tight lumbar spine. And now the front paws are starting to break down because they're so front loaded. Um, they, somebody mentions there's chiropractic for dogs and oh, there is, um, and mom and dad make an appointment and they get really regular right off the bat. Like that dog is in my office every couple months until, um, they just, they pass away. They, they, they leave that body. That animal will be more comfortable and will stay here longer. It doesn't mean there's not injuries. Does it mean there's not a need for medication here and there? But when you take care of that nervous system in a preventative fashion, you get payment back th through, through the roof, through the roof. Um, I still struggle with getting myself in for my preventative care. This is, this is a, such an easy concept. It's such an ease in our life and living that it tends to fall by the wayside. Um, and it doesn't have to be all that much, but it is taking care of the entire nervous system. Um, and it also doesn't mean that you don't do other things when required, like acupuncture and PT and all of that with your animals. Um, when you're also working with your veterinarian, this doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't remove the need for that. It doesn't remove, see, you go in for your annual visits with your veterinarian because they said so. You, you don't have a problem, right? You're gonna run some blood work, we're gonna see where we're at. Well, what if we looked at it, even if it is just annually, 
I'm going to go in and see my chiropractor. They're going to palpate. They're going to move those joints around. They're going to do some adjustments. We're going to see where we're at. Just because there's no numbers on a, on a piece of paper doesn't mean that this, uh, this process, this chiropractic, this adjustment stuff isn't just as important to keeping your pet moving and keeping your pet healthy and happy. Because when they can move and they can get up and everything is less painful, how much happier are you? How much happier are your pets? Um, and then this conversation with Keisha kind of rolled into, um, I had a great conversation with a, a gal yesterday. Um, her dog was recently diagnosed with cancer and we were talking about her options and she had a lot of appointments all set up. Um, she mentioned the vet scared the poop out of her. Um, that she and she made an appointment with the specialty clinic here in the Denver area. She made an appointment with um, a veterinarian, just consults to gather information, which is awesome. You need to gather information. It doesn't mean that you have decided to take their word for it 100% and follow them. But what if sometimes you need to gather information? Um, and she's talking to me, right? She, um, which I have a very different point of view about what um, I would choose with my animals um, if, if um, a cancer diagnosis came back. And that was kind of the conversation that we had was she kept going to, I don't know what to do. So this is my question to you guys. What if now when your dog is three, four, five, prime of their life, running at the dog park, running with you, hiking on the weekends, you know, rocking life, you get really clear on what you will and won't do with your animal and for your animal when things go sideways, what we consider sideways, right? When that cancer diagnosis comes down the line, what are you willing to do or not do? Right? Um, are you that person that's like, you know what? If that happens, I'm gonna do conventional treatment. I'm gonna listen to my vet. I money is not an object ever. Awesome. You know where you stand. You do. You go on that journey with your animal. You know, at three, four. They're great. Awesome get really clear. That comes down the line. I'm only spending so much money. Uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to change the diet. What I am going to do is I'm going to look for alternative stuff. What I am going to do is gather that information like this gal is, see if any part of that does work for me or if none of it works for me, if all of it works for me. But I'm, I'm going to gather that information and then I'm going to choose. What if from now on, you never stand there and wallow in I don't know. You can have I don't know moments, right? I don't know moments. And then you go and Google it. Go gather some information. But, and, and, be aware of what site you're on when you're getting that information. If you're on the American Veterinary, <laughs> website is going to be very conventional information, which may be what you are looking for when you're looking at what that oncologist could possibly tell you when you go on that visit. What if you actually went in armed with information, armed with questions, armed with um, counters as to why don't we choose this instead of this? This is being done over here. Why are you not doing this here? And see where they land on issues. But you probably want to go to those conventional Websites for information. Why don't we go in armed? That doesn't resonate with you. Your, your gut ties up in knots. You, you don't even want to look at that. That can be a good thing and a bad thing. That could just be denial. You know, it, you'll have to take a look at that for yourself in that 10 seconds. So you want to end up on different websites, right? You want to end up on that holistic vets website. You want to end up on a, a nutritional website over here. Like, 
pay attention to where you are getting your information from and see how much it matches from website to website. You know, and what if it's okay to listen to your gut? What if that is closer to following the energy than anything else? If that's how you need to look at that tool, and I talk about following the energy a lot, right? Follow the energy and you're like, what the hell are you talking about, Dr. Andy? Follow the energy. When your gut clenches into a ball of stress, what if that is the energy, your body and your animal all telling you not to continue down that road? And how often do we disregard that for what the doctor says, what the veterinarian says? Right? What if, and what if you started listening? Because that was the other thing this gal would do. She would get so heavy and so passionate about her dislike of the conventional medicine ways. I'm like, do you hear yourself when you talk to talk about that? Do you hear yourself when you talk about that? That heaviness, that passion, that gut, that's not going to work for us energy. And she would simply go back into the wallowing of, I don't know. I just don't know. And what, what she wanted me to do was tell her what to do, which I generally don't do. Uh, generally, this is a journey that you and your animal are going to go on. And what if you could be grateful for that journey no matter what it looks like? She did not. She did not appreciate me saying that because it's always seen as bad, negative, how could this happen to me, horrible thing when you get that cancer diagnosis of whatever it is. Um, a lot of times, not so much fun. A lot of times, not a big deal. Um, but what if you got grateful for that journey? What would that create for your animal and for you? What ease would that create on what's the next step? Where do we want to land on this? Um, sometimes our animals give us lots of time and it's a long journey and it's all over the place and you meet all these different people and you try all these different things and now you have all that information for the next animal or for the next friend. Why can't we be grateful for that? Some animals don't give us any time. They just don't. They create something, they show you something, and they leave their body three days later. What if we can be grateful for that too? Yes, we miss them. Yes, it's not easy. Yes, we are upset about it. I'm not any different than anybody else. And I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for what they showed us in that brief amount of time, in that long journey. I'm grateful that... Well, I guess they were done and they handled it really quickly and I, it kind of took me out of the equation. I can be grateful for that, right? How many of you have struggled in the past? So when, when is it time? I talked about this a lot. When is it time? Oh, and by the way, animals don't tell you anything until it's pretty bad. You, a lot of times, didn't miss anything or, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Oh, yeah, maybe a couple weeks ago they did slow down. Or, or, and you can sit there. You, you certainly can, and you can beat yourself up about it. You, you're more than welcome. Or, you can be grateful for that information. So maybe the next time you see it, maybe the next time you don't. Maybe they didn't say anything. Because they don't generally. It generally with animals, it's kind of a double-edged sword. You know, people say, oh, it just happened. Well, probably not, A. And B, they probably showed you stuff really a long, you know, a long way down that um, path of the disease. They didn't say anything until it was more advanced. Um, so, yeah, sometimes it is out of the blue. Um, Recently had a German Shepherd come in. Oh, handsome, long-haired guy. Oh, he's beautiful. Um, and mom's like, he's, since I saw him, I don't know, two, three months ago. She comes in every two, three months. 
Um, we got him feeling a lot better in the last year. Um, big diet changes, went all raw, cleared up a lot of the yeast problems. He was back to hiking. We kept his rear end in check. He was, you know, and then he had one day, one day where he didn't eat. He was lethargic, so she took him in. And his lung fields are full of what the doc said was cancer and probably spleen involvement. They gave him some pain meds because they also found arthritis, which at 10 year old Shepherd, that is not very exciting news. That's kind of regular news. Um, but a couple of those pills and he's been feeling fine since. And they are some of the most amazing lung fields I've ever seen. They, uh, they are coded in what, there's no diagnostics, but what appears to be cancer. He just needs some pain pills, you know. And mom's pretty much like, I'm just going to enjoy my dog. Keep him comfortable. You know, and, and so that I, Dr. Andy's world, my point of view, I, almost, I, I applaud that. I've been saying that a lot more lately. What happened to supporting the dog and enjoying them? What if that's what you do when you find out um, they have a horrible diagnosis? You support them, make them comfortable, and enjoy your dog. Um, conventional medicine has switched to, we need to fix this disease. But what if we support the being and enjoy your dog? What if this something, this whatever it is, is something that they die with and not from? Um, kind of got way off of preventative care. Um, and then Keisha called us, uh, you know, getting informed. I still think you should get informed. That's a form of empowerment. Oh, yes. I, I want to talk about the schnauzer. And then I want to talk about one other thing I had with in this conversation I had with this gal yesterday, which I hear quite a bit. Um, little schnauzer. I don't know, he's a rescue, I don't know. He's anywhere between 12 and 14. Um, and I met him after his second liver surgery. So they removed um, a tumor. I think that's all they did. I don't think there was any chemo or radiation if I remember correctly. And then they removed it again. They're, they think it was the same thing, but they're not quite sure because it possibly could just be regenerated liver cells, which I thought was, interesting but it's this is also through mom and dad so they may have heard something a little different i i didn't actually talk to the oncologist or the sur or the surgical team right okay and they go in for the ultrasound every six months and they were getting him ready for this third surgery because the tumor came back and mom was so sweet she goes well you know the other two surgeries were a success i stopped and I kind of went, I'm not sure what you're, I didn't say this. This was in my head. I'm like, okay, I'm not sure what your definition of success is, but if we're going in for a third time on something, I'm not sure how the other two surgeries went. Anywho, that was her point of view. They um, switched him to a kidney prescription diet to get his numbers up, which the nutritional value of your prescription diets are quite appalling, but they do what they say they're going to do. So they're going to get his kidney values up and that's all they want to see is those numbers on the paper. Um, I think I did a podcast back in the day called um, Blood Work Is Not Your Pet. Um, you can go and find that on my website if you want to check that out. Um, but anywho, and then last year, COVID. And so they canceled the surgery. He's still with us. And he is rocking it. He is going on, I don't know, a couple mile walks a day. He, they said he's just jumping around. He's just being awesome. And so, and they're just amazed. Um, so, you know, the gift of COVID, right? Uh, the gift and the gratitude for the journey. And they, no, nothing in their world, that they're going to get that surgically removed because he's going to just die with it, not of it. And who knows what it is? Oh, yeah. See, we, 
Um, if Keisha's here, um, we should write this down. Um, do you really need to know what it is? I have this conversation with Dr. Judy Jasek, who has a holistic practice um, here in the Denver area. She's been on my podcast. You can find her talking about raw food diets on Raw Dog Food and Company website. We talk about this a lot. Dogs come in with tumors. They come in with lumps and bumps and all of this. And, and they're like, oh, we need to biopsy and Oh, we need to find out what stage it is. And she's like, no, you don't. What if we stopped um, paying more attention to those numbers on a paper and pay more attention on supporting the animal? Right? Supporting that animal um, with a biologically correct diet. My opinion, my point of view, is a raw food diet. Period, end of discussion. Um, there is no reason to feed your animal processed kibble every single day. It will not contribute to anything but a disease and destruction. Um, what other preventative care can you do? It, you, you now have a diagnosis because then everybody's like, oh, I can do raw now. Oh, I'll go to the chiropractor now. Oh, I'll go do um, ozone therapy now. Well, now you have a problem. Now we have something that we can fight against, right? We can make this significant. But what if you did all that and your animal had a great life? Is there a guarantee? No, no guarantees. Mm -mm. Um, so that was the other thing this gal said in our conversation. She's like, well, I never had to look at feeding raw before. I, I've never been here before. My other dog just, you know, grew old and passed away in her sleep. This is not that dog. And just because you don't have a problem doesn't mean you can't investigate how to support um, your dog being the best they can be every single day. Right? Um his best self, right? My um, hairless, hairless Doberman, right? He has no hair. But the midsection of him, no hair. It's not a special new breed. He ain't a designer breed. He has no hair. So I support him to be his best self. And Judy and I, Dr. Jasek and I talk about this all the time. And actually he was in there and she had a new tech and she's like, well, what's his diagnosis? <laughs> And I, I looked out of him and I looked over at Dr. Jason. I'm like, do we have a diagnosis? Because I don't really care. Don't care. Never went to the dermatologist. Never found out why. I'm just supporting him to be his best self. And that means mama adjusts him. We get our nails are nice and short. We eat raw food diet. We um, go for ozone once a month with Dr. Jasek, even though there's not a problem. right? It be his best self before there's a problem. How can you support your animals to be their best selves before there's a problem? Right? Diet. Adjust that nervous system. Um, exercise, right? Maybe not too much. Maybe too, maybe not too little. Out, fresh air. Um, depending on your dog, some puzzles. Let's get the brain engaged, right? All of that stuff. All of that stuff. Maybe it is ozone therapy with Dr. Jasek before there's a problem. You know? What if you looked at this stuff now? And Christy says, investigating gets hard when you don't know which sources to trust. That's where you don't trust the sources. You trust you. And she's probably so sick of me telling her that. <laughs> know where you are looking when and they are talking about this prescription med and this and this and you check on what website you're on and you are on a veterinary clinic's website yes that is what they're going to tell you okay so if I go to this vet this is what they're going to tell me about this issue okay cool now I'm armed with information now, where do, else do I go? Who else do I talk to? These are the questions you ask. Okay, where do I get this information from? And I can guarantee you, almost guarantee, right? No guarantees, but the universe will put that person, put that information in front of you. 
You just have to be aware of it. You don't trust the sources. Never trust the sources. You trust you. You trust your gut and you follow the energy. You gather information from people, places, things. And you go with the energy that lights you up, that creates ease, that you think your animal would enjoy more. It's only hard because you think it's hard, Christy. <laughs> it is a muscle you have to build. Right? It's just a muscle. And you have those people, you have those places, like those are, there are those websites that I just know the information's accurate. I just know it is. Yes, I have a lot more medical training. I do, I get that, I know. You're sitting out there going, well, it's easy for you, Dr. Andy. It's not, and it's, it, this is still, um, something I have been working on for 18 years with my animals because it gets distracting because they're my animals. But there are places where I just know and I read stuff and I'm like, oh yes, I knew it. I knew there was something about, especially like heartworm testing. I'm like this, I didn't know how, I didn't even know where to go for it, but I knew there was just something off with how we do heartworm in our pets. And I gathered a little information here and I got a little information here. And then there's a fabulous um, article that was written the end of 2020 on Dogs Naturally magazine by a veterinarian filled in a couple more of the blanks that I had on just how in this reality, what is normally accepted for heartworm testing and treatment is pretty much 180 degrees from what would actually work and support your animals. But how many things are put in place so big big companies make money? Big dog food companies, big pharmaceutical companies, um, the big vet chains. How many of those are in place to make money? I'm not saying every vet's out there and that's the only way they see things. It's not. But if you started looking at things with a different lens, things might become more clear as to what you would choose for your animals. So one of my favorite web websites, dog, dogsnaturallymagazine.com. Um, I think they do a phenomenal job. Most of the articles are written by veterinarians. Um, there's tons of information about vaccines, when to do it, why to do it, what to do. Um, and ev what if every situation is different? Right? What if we started looking at supporting the being, not treating the one diagnosis that is what is we consider is wrong? And what can we do today when things are rocking and rolling and your dogs are feeling great to keep them that way as long as possible? Preventative care. Um, also, rawdogfoodandco.com. Um, there's a nutritionist, Neely, um, Neely Piazza, I think is her last name. I'm blanking on her last name. She, she has made our lives a lot, and then she's been working really hard, so she hasn't been making it. She does nutrition consults. You need more information on how to feed raw, give her a call. Pick her brain. It's full of stuff. I get stuff every time we talk about raw and what she's doing with her animals and what I'm doing with my animals. And I get to pick out, ooh, I could add that in. I could do that now, that would be fun. Um, and that's literally how I look at things. Not, ugh, that's gonna be, okay. But it does have to be ease. And if it's gonna be like 10 hours of work a week, it's not gonna happen. So you, you, you know what I mean? But you can start picking and choosing little things from everybody, because everybody's unique. Everybody has different information. Everybody looks at things differently including you and that's what um, I think this gal was getting quite irritated with me what's going to work for you and your dog and she's like just tell me what to do what's going to work for you and your dog just tell me what to do and I wouldn't do it because every situation you every animal that you um, live with and be with 
is different. Every situation is different. We don't all live in the same box all the time. So how can we fill up that box when things are going great, when things are easy, when you can expand biomes and impact nervous systems and create their best selves now that can carry forward? I have to get a video of my, he is, he'll probably just, hmm, he'll be 13 here shortly, three-legged since about three months old. Jack Russell. Granted, he's got Jack Russell genes, and those little shits will live to say 17, 18, 19, so I'm very grateful for that. Um, I should get a video of him um, at breakfast time in the morning. Um, I am so grateful for the journey. I, I've gone with and on with him. What he has shown me, what is possible, and I am just so grateful that I got to co-create this with him. <laughs> I have six different ones. I have six different ones too. We have lots of beings in this house. Um, so yes, it's different every single time. And the less we compare one animal to the next also creates more space for you to choose what's going to work for you and your animal. Kind of full circle, started with preventative care, informing yourself. Never trust the sources, Christy. Trust you. You got this. You got this. You got this. This is your animal that you have created a life with. You've got this. And whatever you choose, and this is maybe the biggest kicker, whatever you choose is going to be the right choice. But what's it going to take to get out of the, I don't knows to, I'm choosing this because this works for us. And what if you don't need any other um, justifications to anybody? Now that, my friends, is a really big muscle to build. And so what if you started now when things are, lack of a better term, good, right? When your animals are young and healthy and happy and vibrant. What if you started now and got clear now? So when stuff shows up, you got this, right? All right, my magical friends, that was a long one. No, it kind of circled all over the place. Um, I hope you got a couple nuggets out of that, if nothing else. Um, so grateful for all of you that were here live. So grateful for all of you that catch this on the flip side at a later time. I know they get posted up on YouTube and Facebook. Um, I think we're working on getting them up on the website, but that's a lot of man hours and all that jazz. So I don't think that's happened quite yet. Um, I will be back next Tuesday, um, our Tuesday live chats, which is 4.05 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Um, I'm Dr. Andy. This is Dr. Andy's World, and thank you, thank you, thank you. So grateful for all of you, and until next week, how much fun can you have with your animals? Bye-bye.